Hello there. Today I'm going to show you how um, I'm going to make my own septic tank riser. Um, let me show you why I need to do that and then we'll get into the making of it. Okay, here is the lid to my septic tank. It's uh, about 16 inches deep in the ground. Uh, in the area of Virginia where I live, in Franklin County, you're required to have it inspected and or pumped every five years. So five years ago, I had it pumped and I dug it up. Then after it was pumped, I covered it back over. Uh, now I had to dig it up again and I thought, well, I don't want to keep doing this. So I checked into a uh, commercially made risers, riser systems for these septic tank lids. And almost all of them are made for round entry holes into the septic tank. As you can see, I have a square one. So this lid is approximately 18 inches square. From corner to corner, it's uh, about 24 inches square. So all of the commercially made round risers are 24 inches in diameter. And I was afraid that if I purchased one of those, it would be too small to get the lid off. Also, the price bothered me a little bit. They were anywhere from $125 to $450, depending on the manufacturer and the way the system went together and how they sold it piece by piece or all together. So I thought, Maybe I can make my own. So let's see what I've done. So the first thing to decide was what to make my septic riser out of. Thought about storage boxes, uh, plastic storage boxes that come with a lid. Thought they were too lightweight. Um, thought about trash cans, plastic trash cans, galvanized trash cans. I almost gave up and then it hit me what about these plastic drums 55 gallon drums that uh, chemicals are shipped in so i went on craigslist for my area and searched 55 gallon drums and lo and behold there was a business that gets chemicals in them what they get in these particular drums is glycol uh, they rinse them out, they sell them for $15 a piece. So I thought, well, $15 is not a bad price to play around with and see if I can make it work. So here's the um, drum that I bought. As you can see, it's, oh, what, three and a half, four feet tall. Let's measure it here. Looks like it's 34 and a half inches tall. So I only need about a 16 inch riser, so that will work. I realized after I got it home that the lid doesn't come off. It's you just access the uh, liquid through those two pore holes in the top. There's no way to take the lid off, and the bottom is solid, so so, as I look at this drum, I notice that there's a step down uh, from the lid where it transitions to the body of the barrel. And if you look at line A versus line B, I think that line A is bigger in circumference 
than line B by at least the thickness of the plastic in the drum. So I think if I cut the lid off at line A and then cut that flange off at line B, the lid will slip right down over the top of the drum. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So I uh, got my trusty uh, jigsaw out and um, did a plunge cut, which was harder than I thought. That plastic's pretty tough, but now I'm starting to go around on the line B mark and cut the top off and and uh, can't hold the camera and cut at the same time. So I'll show you what happens as we get that part of the job done. Okay, the lid's cut off. So it was uh, pretty tough getting the plunge cut started and wouldn't you know, I started at the very place where it's the thickest. Across from each of the um, pouring spouts, the uh, plastic gets much thicker than it is around the rest of the rim, I guess to give it some strength. But anyway, it came off nicely. Plan B. I discovered that when you flip the lid over, and lay it on the drum, it almost latches down. The, uh, the upper rim right here, this, this, this upper rim goes down over the edge of the barrel all but a fraction. So I'm going to take my router and trim off maybe a 32nd of an inch the whole way around and see if that won't fall right down in there. So let me do that. So here's the router bit setup I'm going to use. It'll take an eighth of an inch off the outside of the drum. The um, roller bearing will follow along the edge of the drum and the cutter will uh, take just about an eighth of an inch off. You can see that it's just a little bit bigger than the than the bearing. Okay, I've uh, routed an edge around the top. Guess you can see that. Uh, it's not real pretty, but it'll do the job. And so now we'll. Grab the lid, put it on there, and there you go, a nice seal. So what we got to do now is measure the depth of the hole, cut it off probably about that ring right there, um, and set it in the ground. Okay, I've determined that the optimal depth uh, for the uh, riser is 13 inches. So I've marked uh, a line all the way around the drum um, at 13 inches. And I'm going to use my um, circular saw to try to cut it off instead of the jigsaw. I think maybe it'll cut a little better and a little straighter. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, well that worked out a whole lot quicker and a whole lot easier than the jigsaw. Um, made a pretty nice straight cut around. And on to the next step. So, next step. I needed a flange to cover the corners, the exposed corners of the square opening in the, in the uh, septic tank. So I chose to use a pan that goes under a... Um, water heater and this pan is uh, 26 inches in diameter on the inside at the bottom 28 inches at the top edge of the flare um, so that gives me about an inch and a half the whole way around I'm going to cut the uh, flared sides off and uh, 
and it will it will give me about an inch and a half the whole way around to use as a mounting flange. Okay, so I've marked the water heater pan to reflect the inside of the drum unit, which is the outer marking on the pan. And then I went in an inch and a half and made another mark, and that's going to be used to bend up tabs so that I can pop rivet the uh, portion of the pan that's left to the, the uh, riser base. So we'll see how that goes. I think I'm going to try to cut it with my Dremel tool with a cutting wheel and see how that works. It's, pretty, it's not real heavy aluminum. Okay, let's give this a try and see how it goes. More speed, maybe. Well, it's wearing down my drill, my uh, cutting wheel, a lot faster than I thought it would. But it seems to be doing the job. So I'll finish that up and get back to you. Well, the cutoff wheels just kept flying apart uh, and breaking very quickly. So I'm resorting to metal cutting shears. So that shouldn't take long. It seems to be working quite well. So that worked quite well. Uh, the shears cut it uh, pretty quickly. I did it in about two minutes. Um, so next step is to cut tabs from that inner circle into that uh, line that I marked. And I can bend them up and then pop rivet them to the uh, riser base. So that didn't take long, about... Uh, 10 minutes or less, uh, cut them with the uh, tin snipping shears. And uh, so now the next thing, I guess, is to cut the side off of the uh, pan because I don't want it to collect water. Um, so I'll cut that off. Okay, so the flange is uh, cut out and uh, it's going to serve its purpose. If you see that... Uh, square marked on that piece of cardboard. Let me show it to you. I'll pull this. That is the size of the door in the tep top of the septic tank. And the flange covers all the corners. So when I seal it down, screw it down, nothing can leak. No surface water will be able to leak into the septic tank. So that's the purpose of that. So now I'm going to put the flange on the riser and pop rivet it in place. It occurred to me that some of you may have never seen a pop rivet, how it works, or even heard of one. So I thought that um, I would show you how they work and uh, a little bit about them. This is my pop rivet gun. Um, uh, this is, this particular one has four changeable heads for different size rivet shanks. And, um, uh, you just, a little wrench right there in the handle to screw them in and out. And this is a pop rivet. Um. 
Basically, you drill a hole, insert this into the hole, and then the tool pulls on this shaft. Uh, it's kind of like a nail, and pulls that head through the shaft and causes this to swell up on the opposite side of the material, and then the shaft breaks, and uh, the pop rivet's left in place. So I'll show you how one works here. Also, I thought I'd share with you the, what is, in my opinion, the best tool I've ever bought. Um, and here it is. It's a DeWalt drill driver. And it takes the hex bits or hex bit screwdriver bits, any, any uh, hex bit sockets. And... Here's the neat thing about it. It's, number one, it's got a little flashlight that lights up your drilling area when you use it. But the neat thing is you press the button, nothing happens. Turn your wrist to the right, drills to the right. Turn it to the left, drills to the left. And it's just, once you just use it, it just becomes so handy. I grab it every time I need a screwdriver or a small drill bit. Okay, I've put all the uh, pop rivets in but one, and I'll show you how they work. Um, you have to use, a, these are 3 16 inch pop rivets, so you have to use a 3 16 inch bit. If you use anything bigger, when the rivet swells up, it may not grab the material and hold. So you use the same size bit as the pop rivet. Okay, I'm going to drill the hole. I'm going to put the pop rivet in the hole. I'm you see they have a washer, they have a washer on the one side, so I'm going to put the washer to the plastic, push it through, put the pop rivet gun on, and squeeze, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's swelling up right there, takes about, on this particular job, Takes about four looks like it's gonna take five. Yeah, six. And the nail breaks off and the material is very tightly sealed together. Well for certain one thing. Um You'd have to call this a learning experience. After all the work that I did um, on the lid, had to cut it off the drum, had to uh, shave it down some, had to uh, put this foam in to make a gasket. After all that, I got thinking, all the commercial ones that I had looked at had a, a rounded or domed lid. And I thought, oh, yeah, you know, they did that because they don't want water collecting in there and mosquitoes breeding and those kind of things. So I thought, what am I going to do here? Uh, turn the lid over. And it's got a depression on both sides. It would hold water either way. So that's not going to work. So I got looking at what I had completed already, and I was looking at the part of the drum that I had cut the cut off and was going to discard. Uh, you know, it looks like that's flared out, like it's bigger at the bottom a little bit than it is at the top. So I got a measuring stick and measured it, and lo and behold, 
Let me show you. This top, or the bottom of the drum, sits right down over the part I had already made that makes an airtight seal because it, it tapers in toward the bottom so as you push it down it gets tight on there so I marked it uh, one two three four I put I'm gonna put uh, drilled holes and I'm gonna put four lag bolts from this side in through to uh, when I get it in place seal it down and bingo I'm done how about that and it's nice and flat on top tiny bit of water might lay in there but nothing to speak of so uh, this is the way I'm going to go and uh, it was a learning experience. If, I'd have seen, if I had seen that early on, I, I would have saved me a lot of work. But work don't cost anything. Um, so what have I got in it? I've got $15 in the drum and about $20 in that uh, aluminum pan that goes under it. So that's $35 compared to two, three, four hundred, depending on whose product you buy. So, I'm going to get out here and make sure it fits, and we'll continue by putting it in the hole and putting it all together. Okay, so as you can see, I made the hole bigger uh, to accommodate the riser, and I'm dry fitting it, and everything looks pretty good. It's going to fit right down over, cover covers all the corners of the lid opening. Uh, and seal that off so nothing can get in there so the next step I'm going to do is to put uh, a bead of caulking around the base right here so that little little roots can't infiltrate into the area and, and get into the septic so I'm going to do that now okay so it's all caulked up around the edge and uh, that'll keep anything from infiltrating in there I hope okay I've just had the uh, septic pumped they put the lid back on which I asked them not to do now I got to lift it off there it's heavy but here's my riser I've coated the bottom ring with a liberal coating of black roofing tar and uh, that'll seal between the riser and the top of the tank okay so I've screwed it down to the deck with Tapcon screws I cut pieces of the quarter inch plastic out of the sides of the barrel to make uh, like clamps to hold the flange down and uh, then screwed that into the concrete with Tapcon screws and I've painted the top brown because we're going to have mulch around it so it won't be too noticeable well the job's complete I've uh, finished installing the riser and I've mulched around it uh, so everything is the way it's going to be and let me show you what we have here there you go I'd say it doesn't look bad and it's going to do the job that it's supposed to do very well um, it's an easy matter to just scrape a little of the mulch away from the edges and pick the lid up off the riser and there you have access to the septic tank so it can be done folks thank you